Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today I want to talk about something kind of fun. Take a break from all this technical crap I've been doing lately and just do something fun in Photoshop. And that's these kind of flower spirals. Now, this is something that went kind of like viral on the Photoshop and Lightroom group. I didn't create this technique, but I think it's fun. And I want to show you how you can make some variations on this technique. So let's jump into Photoshop here and I'll show you some really cool things. Right, so I recently ran across this cool like twirl artistic effect that I think is actually pretty neat and can either make some really cool backgrounds or uh, just some really cool artistic graphic effects. Now this is nothing new. I found this on the Photoshop and Lightroom group recently on Facebook and uh, one of the people posted where it came from or where they might have seen it. So I just want to give that credit that this was written in December 6, 2011 and get these twirl photography. And here's the original tutorial. I'm going to show you how I do this in Photoshop and show you just some ways that you can manipulate this twirl photography to look uh, kind of cool on your photographs. So let's just go ahead and start that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this image size really small. So I'm going to make this about 1000 uh, width by 667. Now I wouldn't suggest this if you're going to be using this for some type of graphic effect, but the thing is here is that a lot of the effects that we're going to be using here, the radio blurs uh, and some of these distortion effects uh, can really be taxing on your computer, even if you have a very fast one. So I'm going to do this on a very low res image so that when you do it on a high res image, you'll get a better quality, but you can actually see it here in the tutorial. So I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer, press command or control J. I'm going to go to filter. And then in that filter, I'm going to go to blur and go to radio blur. Now I use this radio blur quite a bit. It's actually one of my favorite thing to do is just to really blow this out with this radio blur. So you're going to select an amount of 100. It's usually set by default to spin. You're going to set that to zoom and make the quality best and press OK. Now it's working really fast because I said this is a low res image. So now just press command or control F and that will do the exact same operation again and command or control F to the exact same thing again. Now they say they request a, or they suggest anywhere between three and five. I like the three mark uh, from doing some of my research on this one. And then you're going to go uh, duplicate that layer, click on that original layer, and you're going to go to filter. You're going to go to distort. And then with the twirl, you're going to set that to 80. Press OK. On the top one, you're going to set this twirl, distort, and then twirl to negative 80. Press OK. So with this top one, you're just going to change this from normal to lighten and bam, a lot of really cool stuff happens in, in the process here. So here's the uh, original before photograph and here's the after. Now as you uh, create these, you can see that you can do some really cool stuff with this now. So you don't really have to limit yourself to this exact spiral effect that what we just did here. You can go on to any one of these layers and, and do some interesting stuff. So I'm going to press this layer, press command or control T. I'm going to right click here and go flip horizontal and then right click here and go flip vertical. And you can see it kind of makes these even more um, outrageous effects. It's pretty cool. Another thing you can do is uh, create a curves adjustment layer right on top. So we'll press enter to undo that transform and then we'll go and make a curves adjustment layer and we can set this curves adjustment layer. Uh, if you can see there's a very low contrast in here so everything's kind of faded. If we move this over to the right so that it gets its darkest dark is right there at that tip and then its lightest light is right there at that tip. I'm pressing alter option to show that so I'm not blowing any of those areas out. Alter option will show you that and then boom right there. So now you can see that that extra curve adjustment layer gives us a nice kind of glowing effect here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, at this point, you could just group these all to together by pressing command or control G and putting them in their own group so that they are all by themselves so that you have free range to edit this. And one of the things that I would do here is to double click on this and you get your blending options. Now with these blending options, you can do some really cool things. So if I press alt or option and feather this out, you don't have to press alt or option. If I just move this over, you see we get this pixelated grainy type effect when I do that of what's uh, being revealed from the layer underneath this group. But if I press alt or option, I can move this over to the right and start to slowly reveal that stuff. And I can do the same thing on the top layer, slowly reveal some of the, the black areas that are coming through there and then press OK. Now that looks uh, kind of bad, but if we make a mask here and we paint with black on this mask, we can paint away all the effects that we don't want in this photograph. And we can kind of get this interesting looking uh, spiraled effect, spiral effect in our sunset. This is just something kind of fun that you can do in Photoshop. It's kind of a break from all of the really technical things that we do and just kind of get in there and just 
remember what we do Photoshop for, um, you know, the fun, the artistry. Uh, and here with this one, I can even take this further. Now that I look at it, I can just go ahead and paint this area out here with a nice big brush, paint this area out here. And that looks pretty interesting. And we get this kind of wave effect kind of happening in our sunset, almost as if we use like a, some kind of a long exposure technique or a rainbow technique or something like that. I don't know, just something fun and interesting. And if you don't know how to do this, or you want to have it on uh, autopilot, I've made a series of actions for you. It's called flower spirals. So you just click that flower spirals and it'll automatically do it for you. Now I did not create this technique. I don't want to take claim to that. I found it and I just made some really cool, fun actions and made some variations on the theme. If you like this, please subscribe because I do these tutorials every Friday, new free tutorial every single Friday. It's a lot of fun here on Everyday HDR. Like it, share it, tell a friend, and uh, take, take a look at these actions and tell me what you think. Thank you very much.